joining me now is the CEO of Kayak and Open Table, Steve Hafner. Good to have you with us, Steve. Thank you uh, for, 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 for joining us. Um, the... Let's talk about the bargains that are out there and the new things, for example, that you're doing with Open Table to take advantage of, in, in the nicest way to help people in this situation. Sure. So if you have to travel, uh, certainly the airfares have never been quite as low as they are now. Uh, but I think if you do choose to travel, that uh, you should be prepared to stay wherever you're going for at least two weeks in self-quarantine. That seems to be where the government's restricting that. So. You can still use Kayak to find these great deals. Uh, another thing you can do on, on Kayak is we actually have a filter for um, eliminating any fares from the display that aren't uh, fully refundable or have cancellation penalties. So that's still there. Uh, on the open table side of, of the business, we announced yesterday a very cool modification to our core software that does two neat things. First, it allows restaurants, who as you know, have been very hard hit by this crisis, to actually pivot and turn themselves into grocery stores, local grocery stores. So a consumer can launch the Open Table app and see what restaurants are selling fresh baked goods, uh, desserts, staples, even like toilet paper. The other thing that the new software hack does is it allows grocery stores to start acting like restaurants. So I don't know about your neighborhood, Richard, right. but I'm sure your viewers have, have queued in line outside of grocery stores, which is a, a pretty weird feeling but you can now use the Open Table app to actually reserve a spot to shop in a grocery store. That's interesting. Here in New York, uh, downtown New York, all the supermarkets have had lines outside. You're right. I want to come to this point about travelers of which, you know, I, I've already said on this program, I am one who have reservations, who had tickets, they either canceled them or they've got a flight credit, you can't get through to the airline, you can't get through to the travel agency. What is a passenger supposed to do? Well, I think first and foremost, and, and by the way, it, you know, I work for um, Kayak and Open Table, which are both owned by Booking Holdings, which has very big worldwide presences in customer service uh, departments. We're trying to do the right thing for the customer to get them home or to get them to where they're going first and foremost financial uh, remuneration aside. I think the suppliers themselves, the airlines and hotel companies are in a really tough spot. You know, their call centers are overwhelmed. Uh, their cash flow positions are a little precarious. They're trying to do the right thing by consumers too. And I think all this will get um, to a good place. Uh, there, there is gonna be some angst and some consternation on the part of consumers until some of these short-term issues get sorted out. But, but I guarantee you, uh, you know, the big airlines and the big hotel companies and even intermediaries like uh, travel agents want to do right by consumers because not only do we want to get them home now, but we want to make sure that they have the, the, the flexibility to go travel later when government restrictions are lessened. I, I sort of get it that no... I, I understand that no provisions... No reasonable company would have put in place anything like the provisions necessary to handle this sort of calamity. Uh, it just, I mean, you, you'd have been mad to have made provisions on something on this scale, the amount of, uh, of this. But for you as a CEO, um, how are you finding working from home? How easy is it to manage a team What's your biggest challenge as a chief exec managing a large company from home? Well, the, you know, we, I think we were one of the first companies to actually look at our, the, the health and well-being of our employees and close our offices before a lot of other companies did. And the first thing we had to do was make sure that they had the tools to be productive from home. And that means we had to upgrade our security systems, upgrade the number of routers we had, to support a lot, you know, over 2,000 concurrent uh, VPN sessions. So we had to make sure that was all in place. We had to make sure that we have sufficient bandwidth to take um, those connections and that every employee had a laptop with the right amount of secure software on it. So we did all that. Good news is at our company, you know, we're global. We have over 30 offices. People are used to working in a very distributed way, and we haven't seen any drop off in productivity at all. Right. And as the CEO, do you feel if some in the future, when this is over, would you be willing to let more of your team, 
and uh, work from home. Is, I mean, we've always promised it. We've always said it might happen. Well, now you've proven it can happen. So would you be open to extending it to your employees in the future? We've always been very open-minded on terms of having a flexible work from home policy. That said, we invest a ton of money into making our offices really great places to be. And there's no substitute for interpersonal interaction with someone. So yeah, we're being very productive right now while everyone's working from home. But as you can see, I'm in my dining room. I have a lot of conference calls every day now with 10 people in kids' bedrooms or out on terraces, et cetera. That's great in the short term, but long term, right. there's just no substitute for being all co-located. What's that picture behind you? Before I leave you, I just got to ask you, what is that picture? That it's, it... Sure, it's funny. I'm here in Miami Beach, but you know, our beach is closed, which is right out this window. This is actually just a couple of Massimo Vitales of a beach in Greece. Excellent. Good. Well, that's what I answer. Thank you.